I'm the uh, WebSphere Technical Channels Manager for Australia and New Zealand. That means if you are a business partner in the WebSphere brand or you, you need assistance in implementing um, WebSphere related projects, then I'm your man. You can contact me. The email address is very easy to remember. If you need something to fix, you need a spanner, right? And that would be me. So the, the, uh, the email address is aspanner at au1.ibm.com. And I'm also a WebSphere integration solution architect, which means um, that I work across the whole WebSphere portfolio. The WebSphere portfolio contains um, around 400 products, and that's divided up in, in business process management and um, connectivity and infrastructure, and I work across all of those. So we have a look at WebSphere Smash, WebSphere Portal, and the, the Lotus Web Content Management system on the IBM desk. Dev Cloud. So does any, is anyone familiar with WebSphere Smash? Okay, that's uh, not a lot of hands. So WebSphere Smash is um, it's basically a situational application development environment. That means um, you're, you're really quick and it's really easy to, to develop your application and have them up and running. And why that is, is what I show you now. Here we go. So how, how do you access the IBM Test Dev Cloud? Very easy. You, you type in ibm.com slash cloud or you, you search on a search engine for IBM Cloud. Then you, you end up on this uh, web page and uh, you click on the, the IBM Test Dev Cloud link down there. And that will bring you directly to the uh, development and test dev. You have a lot of information there. There are a lot of video tutorials. I personally love those video tutorials because they, um, you know, it's like a two, three minutes show and, and it explains you what, what to do and how to do it at the same time. So you register. If you've never been on that site before, it's just standard information, first name, last name, company, country, and a password. That's it. If you've been there before, then you just uh, log in, sign in. And once it's done, then you end up at your dashboard. So you, you basically um, have a lot of information around there, right? Support forums, those are monitored by IBMers. So if you raise a question, then IBMers around the globe will, will look at your questions and answer, answer that accordingly. Those are the uh, documentation libraries. There's heaps of information there. There are a lot of guides how to get started. So it's, it's very easy to, to get your head around the, the topics and, and you know, to play around with that and to get some experience in the in the cloud environment. So now, in terms of instances, you cl just click on the Add Instance link and you have uh, a whole bunch of, of different applications you can play around with. You have like Red Hat Linux, you have DB2, you have Rational Application Developer, you have Rational Asset Manager, you have Rational Requirements Composer, you have SUSE Linux there, a plain, a plain image, you've got the WebSphere Application Server, WebSphere Portal, and WebSphere Smash with the App Builder. So we, in, in that demo, we just choose the, the, the WebSphere Smash App Builder, and we, we, add, we click on the Add Instance link, right? And then we, we have key, Keys Defined, which is um, addressing the security concerns in the cloud, so we're not just having a simple username password. We've, we've have the, the security a notch up, right? So it's, it's a, a private public key infrastructure that is used to access your, your data on the cloud in your application. So you have the, the license agreement that you, of course, read completely and agree to. And um, yeah, then you just click the, the Go button and you see that there's a success message. So you, your instance has been added and it's, it's provisioning now, so it's, it's starting up. And that'll take around six to eight minutes. And then you've got your for, for web three application server that is right. So and, and after those six to eight minutes, you're you're ready to go and play around with your your application server. So you've got here a, a status log. So once the instance is active, you just you can reboot the instance, you can delete the instance, or create an image out of that. If you've done some customization, then you create yourself an image out of that, and you can reuse that that customized image without having to redo the the customization work each time. And then you just click on the link and you, you type in the username and password that you have um, provided when you were creating your image. So that's, that's no, no magic. You've basically provided all this information there, right? And once you have done that, then the app builder is, is um, starting up. And the app, app, builder, app builder is nothing cloud specific. It's just the Smash application 
um, development environment basically it's all web based right so you don't need anything installed on your on your laptop it's just it's all all web based it's also based on project zero I don't know if you heard of project zero and um, yeah that, that's just a demonstration so we, we have the app builder and we create a new application and that's all in the cloud right so we, you don't have anything installed on your <laughs> on your local PC other than your, your web browser so you create a, a new application and the application does nothing, right? It's just like to show you guys that we've got a cloud-hosted IDE plus a cloud-hosted runtime environment. So now the app is, is ready and you have links on there that, that allow you to start the application. And then you have a URL that gives you access to that application. And then if you've done everything right, then you see a, a message that uh, my app is up and running. So that basically concludes the demo of, of WebSphere Smash, right? So we've, we've created an instance, we have installed nothing on our, on our local PC other than the web browser, and we have an application up and running. The second part of this demo is using WebSphere Portal and WCM. Are there any Portal or Wicam users in here? Very good. So again, same thing, right? You click on the add instance link, you, you use the, the key pair that you created previously. And that's all done via links, right? So, um, and, and we show you in detail how that's done in the, in the second demo because the, the Amazon infrastructure also uses a public key infrastructure and it's exactly the same thing. Just the, that's just a, a bit of a, an exercise to actually breathe some, some life in the, in the marketing slides and show you guys how it's, how it's really been done, right? Very easy. The, what I like about the IBM Test Dev Cloud is that it's all, all streamlined, right? You have everything there. You have the links to start up the application there. You have links to, um, to access it via, via the web. So it's very, very nicely done. So same thing again. You start up the instance, right? And you, you have the, the log here and then you, you um, see the instance active message. And then again, you click on the link, and then the, the portal login screen is um, being provisioned. It's again, word user and password, that's what you, you have provided before. Word user is a bit of a, of a naming convention in that uh, scenario. IBM images tend to, to have the word user as the, the local admin for the, on an application or portal uh, level. And that's basically it. So you, you've you spent now eight minutes to get a, a portal server up and running, right? So who has installed portal uh, manually? Okay, how, how long did, did that take you? Sorry? Half a day. That's a non-clustered environment, right? Just standard on your, on your, yeah. Okay, so that's a couple of days for, for clusters and less than a day or nearly a day for a single instance, and, and that took you eight minutes, right? So that's, that's a bit of a value add, I'd say, because you can, you can get all your, your developers or proof of concepts, proof of technology, if you go out to a client or you wanna, wanna do an internal proof of uh, concept for your company, then that's what, what you, you know, that's the, the amount of time and, and cost associated with it that you have to spend, right? So now we fired up the web content management system all up and running in the cloud, then you can also download any sort of wizards, right? Wh whatever is appropriate for your local environment, like the, the Lotus uh, site generation wizard is also, is also um, applicable for the cloud. So it's exactly the same. You, you interact with the device, uh, sorry, with the, with the server in exactly the same way. So install your portals, your applications, so there's, there's nothing different other than the huge amount of, of uh, cost and time saving. So that's one part, how you can use that, right? So we've seen, we've, we've got the servers hosted on, on the cloud, right? Another opportunity is to actually use an image, and we've seen before out of the image catalog that there is a rational application developer image, for example, right? So you fire that up and, and you're not running your server in the cloud, it's more you, you remote desktop to this image and then you use the application tooling on the cloud, right? So you, you don't install anything again on your server, right? All you have is your browser and you, you or, or your remote desktop in tool and then you remote desktop into the cloud and you've got that instance up and running. So now if you have 20 developers, you fire the same instance up 20 times and again, it's a bit of a time and cost saving if you, if you do that, right? Mm -hmm.